this recording is uh, for unit eight, and that has to do with the uh, basically the different phases of the moon, its motion with respect to the Earth, and uh, both uh, eclipses, namely the lunar eclipse and the solar eclipse. Uh, let me share with you my screen so that we have. Uh, information on display. So let me share screen two. Anyway, uh, basically, uh, the different phases of the moon are related to its uh, uh, motion around the Earth, as you can clearly see from this one. Uh, the moon goes around the Earth in about 27.3 days in its cycle. Okay. However, we will see exactly why it has to be a little more than that to go from a new moon to a new moon. In other words, the lunar month is about two days longer than its actual rotation. It has to do with the same reason as discussed in the case of the rotation of the Earth around the axis with the sidereal uh, day for the case of the Earth. It's going to be the sidereal um, lunar month, okay, which is going to be about 29 and a half days. Again, uh, as you can clearly see, let me see if I can pick up a color in here. As you can clearly see, this is the starting point. This is going to be the new moon. The moon is between the Earth and the and the and the uh, and the Sun. So all the radiation that come from the Sun, of course, is going to be blocked by the moon, and we will not be able to see it. So this is when the new uh, lunar month starts. As the moon revolves around the Earth, as the moon starts to move around the Earth, in this case, little by little, of its uh, uh, the shadow that is cast from the uh, basically the uh, the sun that he that it blocks the sun is going to be revealed. So we'll here start to do to see a, a crescent, and that crescent will ever increase. This takes about seven point four days. Let me choose the color in here. It takes about seven point four days to uh, go from the new moon to the next moon. Because if you take 29 and divided by 29 and a half and divided by four, because the whole cycle is divided into four stages, basically. You have the waxing crescent, the increasing crescent, if you wish. And uh, after that, that's the first stage. Then it's going to be a quarter moon. And uh, that's the first quarter. Here it is, basically half the moon, if you wish, is showing. And uh, then it's going to start increasing step. So it's really a waxing gibbous in this case. This is called a gibbous when there is a bulge like this one. So it's increasing until we reach the full moon. So this again takes about 7.4 days. If you add up the numbers, it's going to be roughly about 29.5 days. Okay. And uh, now we are in full moon. In other words, it's going to be fully exposed by the sun. And uh, then it's going to continue its rotation. As it does rotate, then the shadow starts to cast from the opposite side now. And as we're uh, decreasing this one, we have waning gibbous. In other words, the bulge is decreasing from full moon to slightly less until we are back into a third quarter. So basically, this is the direction we're moving in. At that point in here, we have a third quarter. We're exactly at this point in here in the opposite direction. So this constitutes a 90 degree angle. So if I were to draw, draw a triangle from the sun and go to the earth, to the moon, this forms a right angle triangle. In other words, this is 90 degrees. So this is where the quarters happen, whether the first quarter or the second quarter, it's the same thing. It's still a 90 degree angle in here. Uh, then after that, we're decreasing. In other words, we have a crescent now, but that the crescent is shrinking in size until we lose the moon again. So this is the four basically stages through which the moon goes through. It goes from a new moon, uh, first quarter, full moon, and then you have the third quarter. And between them, there is a waxing crescent. The crescent starts to increase. And there is a waxing gibbous. In other words, in here, the bulge starts to increase. And there is a waning gibbous in the third stage. And then there is a waning crescent. So this is basically the different phases of the moon. Let me see if I. Uh, 
again, this is the same thing. Now, in the beginning of the month, the lunar month, usually after the sun sets, that's when the crescent starts to appear. So if you are looking at night and you see the sun just going down, and then with it, you see that the moon just following it, you know that you are in the beginning of the lunar month. And the opposite in here, when you are, uh, uh, when the sun is setting, uh, and then you see that the moon just barely coming from the other side, that's 15 days have passed, basically. That's the middle of the lunar month. That is a full moon, okay? So on one side, you have the new moon, and the other side, you have the full moon. The full moon will stay all day, basically, on, on, on uh, in the sky, in this case, on day 15. So if I were to look at the sky around uh, uh, midnight or... Uh, and the, after eight days, basically after the first quarter, you were going to see the moon uh, setting uh, toward the west. Okay, and uh, 22nd day, which is the third quarter in this case, it's going to be rising into the east. Uh, and then on the um, on uh, on uh, the 15th day, it's going to stay all night basically in the in the sky. Now also. You could end up with a scenario where the moon is showing on on daylight because after the sun sets in the beginning, after I'm sorry, after the sun rises, I should say, the moon is following it. So that's really the beginning of the month. The moon is following the uh, the sun, and the opposite is true toward the end of the lunar month. It's the other way around. Okay, the sun is following the the moon. So you can see the moon during daytime depending on where you are on the lunar month. So this is some of the pointers that help you define the lunar month, basically, and how it works. There is another point that I was uh, talking about earlier, and this has to do with, the, uh, with what we talked about when we said the day. Okay, here is the Earth, the moon, and the sun lined up, okay? Let's say this is the beginning of the moon. This is the new moon, actually. And if I want to wait for the next new moon, of course, I want them to, all three of them, to be lined up in such a way that the moon's light is completely, basically, on the opposite side. We cannot see the other side of the moon. Now, uh, here is the point. When the moon would have rotated 27 Point three days, it would have gone back to its original position. In other words, if I were looking at the background stars, this is still the new position. So this is exactly 27.3 days. So this is the sidereal lunar month. Okay, as opposed to the actual not the actual, I should say this would be probably more actual, but this is from our perception. Okay, this is what we call the lunar month. Okay, this is 29.5. So in other words, it takes an extra two days basically to line up with the sun so that we have a new moon. Now we have a new moon in here. Of course, the next new moon, new moon is going to be in here and it's going to shift around throughout the year. So this is how we have that uh, connection between the two. This number was known a long time ago with this number as well. So this is not something that is new. So this is the in reference to the background stars, okay? Uh, now, here is something of interest, and that is, again, I was talking about the, uh, the eclipses. Because of the fact that the, uh, the, the moon and the sun and the earth, they can line up during the new moon or during the full moon, <clears throat> they are on the same line. We could end up with a scenario where actually the light of the sun is blocked by the moon. We call this one a solar eclipse. If it's the opposite, if it's uh, the full moon, in this case, the full moon can also be blocked by the earth, the shadow from the earth. And in that case, we have a lunar eclipse. So those are the two. Now they can only happen really in a given location, or they can only happen, first of all, with these two planes being on the same side. Now here is the situation, the earth's Rotation around the sun is the ecliptic plane. So this is one plane, the ecliptic plane. And there is another plane actually of interest in here, and that is the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the lunar plane.
plane where the, the, the moon basically goes around the earth. These two are tilted slightly and they shift actually. They, there is a procession, the moon moves around up and down a little. So sometimes it really lines up or close enough from it. And sometimes it goes between anywhere between five degrees up and five degrees down as it fluctuates. If it comes within one degree, then in this case, we will have a, a, uh, a solar or a lunar eclipse. And usually when one happened in one month, the other one happened in the same month because of the fact that there is this takes about, I mean, two weeks later, the other one happened. So if we have a solar eclipse in here, two weeks later, we should have a lunar eclipse. So this is basically how this works, provided that these two planes are within one degree from one another. So this is basically how eclipses happen. Eclipses are kind of rare, especially the full eclipses. A full eclipse, like in this case in here for the sun, is when uh, both of them are, uh, when actually uh, uh, the earth passes by, or at least a portion of the earth, as you can clearly see from here, it's not the entire earth, has uh, cast a full shadow on that region. So we have in this case, a full solar eclipse. We could also have a partial, depending on this position and also depending on where you are on earth. And that is when the shadow is not in the embra, this is called the embra, it's actually in the penumbra, which is really, a sh uh, the, the, there is a little bit of uh, rays that are coming still. So it's a, not completely dark as you can clearly see in this case. So this explains both phenomena. This is the opposite. This is the lunar eclipse as opposed to the solar eclipse that I was showing. Again, these two planes happen to be in the same time, uh, uh, happen to be close from one another, I should say, the, 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 the lunar plane and that of the earth around the sun. So this is the moon around the earth and this is the earth around the sun. These two planes have to be within one degree from one another, okay? Otherwise, if they are five degrees or negative five degrees, we're too far we will not be able to, I mean, they will still line up, okay? We will see the full moon in that case, or in the other case, we will see just the, the new moon, okay? The sun will not be blocked by it. If we follow the pattern until when this is, actually, as I was saying in here earlier, this is, the, the moon is small in size, relatively speaking, to the Earth. Furthermore, when it casts its shadow, it's even smaller, and it covers only smaller portions of the uh, the earth. In 2017, there was a big uh, uh, solar eclipse in the Midwest. And it actually, uh, two years from uh, this year, in 2024, there will be a big one also on, on the, on the, uh, in 2024. So in other words, these are rare events here in North America. I mean, if you are in Europe, in 2026, there is a major one actually that is going to go through Spain and portions of England and things like that, especially the northern part of it and actually part of the Mediterranean and also Portugal. And there is this one in here that is in 2027. So that is actually going to cover the entire North Africa all the way to uh, parts of the Middle East and uh, the Corn of Africa. So there are places also in South America, there is one that happened actually, what is it, uh, in 2021, I'm looking for it in here, actually about uh, two months ago, in uh, I'm sorry, about two months ago in uh, the in Antarctica. Anyway, so this is these are rare events, and again, that depends on that alignment. In uh, the next few weeks, you will be given assignments for uh, monitoring the moon position and with details about the moon phases and uh, basically the different, I mean, questions about the moon phases and also details about when to, uh, when to go out and basically do lunar observations. Thanks.